Welcome to Module Monday. Module Monday is a video series where I show off a cool PowerShell module every Monday. This Monday, we're looking at the PowerShell Secret Management module uh, by Microsoft. So the PowerShell team has actually been working on the Secret Management module for a while. Uh, and this is actually the third preview of the Secret Management module. Um, and this is kind of a redesign in terms of uh, where they were headed. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about the Secret Management module and the accompanying uh, Secret Store module that pretty much provides a default vault that works on uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac. So the Secret Management module itself allows you to store things like byte strings, secure strings, PS credentials, and hash tables in kind of a uh, generic way so that you can store them in the various um, vaults that you may have. Um, so some of the commandlets that come with this module include uh, vault management commandlets, so registering secret vaults, getting information about secret vaults, um, and then testing secret vaults, and then as well as the simple like set secret, get secret, get secret info, and remove secret for managing your secrets themselves. So the big idea here is that the secret management module is an abstraction over the various vaults that may, you may use, and then um, the secret store module is actually a um, cross-platform vault implementation that works on Windows, Linux, and Mac. And I'll show you how to use these and how to install them just uh, in a couple minutes here. So um, first, what we're going to do is we're going to actually install the, um, the secret management and secret management or secret store modules. Uh, so because of some bugs in um, PS get v2 and v3, uh, it can be a little challenging to get these to install because they're both pre-release. But I found that this particular command line here um, for installing these modules allows us to install both pre-release modules. So once I've installed these modules, pretty much what you get are the various commandlets for secret management and some configuration commandlets for the secret store. So the first thing that we need to do is actually call register secret vault. So this will register that default store as our default vault. And that's because I'm specifying the default vault switch parameter at the end here. Um, once I do that, I will actually have a place to pretty much store my secrets. And uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to create a simple secret using set secret. Uh, I'm going to call it test secret, and then just the value of the secret is test secret. So in that secret parameter, I could also specify things like secure strings and hash tables and PS credentials and that kind of thing. So once I hit enter, you're going to see that it's going to ask for a password. So the password is actually a pretty much a key for the uh, encryption algorithm that's going to be encrypting the file that stores this particular secret. So um, if you don't enter a password, it's actually going to use a key file that's actually stored on disk as the um, pretty much the, the key for decrypting the uh, vault. So um, it's a little interesting that we have to specify a password be for, to get our passwords out. But um, this is just kind of the default uh, secret store implementation. And um, because secret management is extensible, we'll be seeing other uh, vaults coming out. Um, so now that I've actually stored my secret, I didn't have to enter a password. I just kept hitting enter there. Um, I can actually get that secret out. And you can see what I call get secret. It returns um, a secure string. And if I actually wanted the plain text uh, value, if I needed to like, use this with the REST API or something like that, I can use as plain text. And it'll actually return that text that I entered um, into that secret parameter. Um, in addition to just getting the secrets themselves, you can also list secret information. So uh, this will just kind of tell you what secrets are in the vault. Um, you can use wildcards and that kind of thing to search for things inside the vault. And then it'll tell you uh, what vault it's stored in and then uh, the type of secret that or like object that is stored in the secret vault. Um, and then each uh, secret store is going to potentially come with its own configuration options. And that, those are just going to be implemented by the vaults themselves. So the secret store, um, whoops, the secret store command or uh, module comes with um, some secret store configuration commandlets. So you can use get secret store configuration to actually see what those configurations are. So secret store has a couple um, interesting ones. First is scope. This is uh, only implemented for current user right now. It looks like in the future they're going to do all user scope. Um, but it's pretty much storing uh, this vault secret information uh, in a local app data uh, folder that I'll show you in a little bit. Um, then we have password required and um, some password uh, information, I guess. So the password required means that we need a password for this vault. Um, and then the password timeout is how many 
seconds in this case 15 minutes um, before the password that's been entered will expire inside this PowerShell process. So in 15 minutes, we have to enter the password again. And then finally, we can turn on do not prompt. And this is used for uh, like CI environments where you don't actually want, you know, the console waiting for, um, you know, the user to enter anything because it's running in an automated environment. And then you can use, um, you know, various commands to update those uh, settings. Well, let's actually go ahead and update our secret management um, password, or secret store password. Uh, so it's going to want us to enter the old password, which I haven't entered anything, so I just hit enter. And then I'll enter a new password, and I'm just using password as a password. So, okay, now I've entered my password, and uh, what you'll notice is if I open a new PowerShell process, and I actually try to get secret, and I think the name of it was test secret, uh, it's going to ask for a password because the secret store requires a password. Um, if I get that password wrong, you're going to see a valid password was you know required to access this particular um, secret vault. So if I do that again and I enter the password, it would work. But there's also another command that you can use, uh, which is unlock secret store. And I think the idea here would be uh, this is what you would call in a CI environment. You'd probably pass in an environment variable, something like that, but I'm gonna pass in just passwords, and that's my secret store password. And now when I call get secret, you can see that I can get my secrets out. So that's kind of how you unlock the secret store. And then this will be good for 15 minutes, and then uh, I will have to enter a password again. So the default secret store, um, and actually all the secret management stuff, is stored in your local app data, Microsoft PowerShell secret management. And if I pop into that Explorer window, what you're going to see here are, uh, first of all, the local store, which is um, that secret store uh, info, I believe. And this is, these are those encrypted files. If I were to look at those, you can see that VS, whoops, VS Code uh, actually cannot open those because it is uh, a binary file, and that's that encrypted file that's storing our secrets. Um, in addition to that, there's also a secret vault reg registry, and this actually is where all the um, the vaults are registered. And you can see here that it's pretty much a pointing to a module path and a module name. Um, vaults can actually take custom parameters. So in the example of they have, they have an example on their website for an Azure Key Vault, and one of those would be the subscription ID and the um, the resource name for your um, for your actual Azure Key vault uh, resource. So uh, that vault information is stored in the same place. So uh, if you ever wanted to like reset back to zero, you could pretty much delete this secret management folder. And that's what I've been doing when I've been putting together this demo. All right, uh, let's actually look at uh, extending the secret vault. So uh, like I said, the big idea here is that we can extend the secret vault. They've kind of put out this default store that allows us to store something in this file, but um, they've also put out some examples of some extensions that you can actually create for um, the secret management module. So uh, pretty much the most simple version of that is they actually have a test local script extension. And what this does is it actually creates a secret management store or vault that um, stores files, um, CLI XML files into, I believe it's the temp directory. Um, and then what we can actually do is use the secret management commandlets to uh, store secrets into these XML files that they're just plain text. They're not encrypted or anything, but it's a good example of how you could like potentially call some other type of, um, you know, uh, vault provider. Um, the other things that they have examples for are uh, the Credman store, which uh, it looks like it is for storing secrets into Credential Manager. And they also have an Azure Key Vault example, where it's actually using the AZ commandlets to um, pretty much get secrets out of Azure Key Vault. So the idea here would be you'd use the standard get secret, set secret, uh, remove secret commandlets to actually interact with Azure Key Vault. Um, so let's actually go ahead and try importing this. Uh, actually, I have this in another file, so I have to type it all out. Um, I'm going to register a new uh, secret vault. Um, I'm going to register that local store, that script, that uh, PSM1 that just pretty much stores as XML files. And once that's registered, I've also set that as my default vault. So if I set a secret now, 
uh, it's going to default to this file. So I actually modified that PSM1, so it would just kind of print that file out to me. Um, and if I open that in code, what you're going to see, oh, it keeps opening on the wrong window, sorry. Um, you can see here that it just took that CLI XML and it wrote it out as an XML file, and we have our test secret. So all these standard commandlets will now work. So if I call get secret info, um, oh, I need to enter my password. You can see here that I have now secrets in my secret store, which is that uh, one that I uh, first imported. And then the second one that I registered was this local secret store. And I've uh, stored some secrets in there as well. Um, so, uh, as you can see, the uh, secret management module is extensible, and the idea is that uh, hopefully this ecosystem grows of secret management vaults. So uh, one example of it already growing is Tyler from the PowerShell team has created a secret management uh, vault for LastPass. So it actually uses the LastPass CLI to manage um, pretty much secrets uh, using the secret management module and the LastPass CLI. So you could actually call set, get secret and set secret to get things in and out in and out of your uh, LastPass instance locally. Um, so that's another good example of uh, pretty much a PSM1 file that you can go and check out on how to implement your own secret management module. So in this video, we took a look at the Microsoft's new secret management module and secret store module and how you can use secrets inside your PowerShell scripts. I would envision that we see a lot more of these vaults popping up soon. So definitely keep your eye out on the PowerShell gallery or just kind of on Twitter to see who's releasing cool secret management modules. And if you like videos like this, definitely subscribe to my channel.